Guys and gals, let's not mess around. Six reasons to buy workhorse stock and also a couple of reasons to be cautious. Right, number one, competitive advantage. Right off the bat, workhorse actually have a few different competitive advantages within their target market. And the first one is that they're working within a very niche space. Workhorse is targeting the last mile delivery market, which is vehicles that pick up goods from warehouses and factories and deliver them to customers' houses. Kind of like if you were to buy a parcel from eBay or Amazon, the delivery driver is going to go to the store, pick up your goods and drop them off at your house. And that's considered to be the last mile. So if we think about it, these companies are doing a lot of high volume and short distance deliveries all day, every day. And workhorse vehicles happen to be the only American all electric vehicle to pass the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard Test. Try saying that sentence three times fast, I dare you. And by the way, in case you didn't know, workhorse believe that there is an $18 billion addressable market for last mile delivery vehicles. So there is no doubt that there is plenty, plenty, plenty of potential for workhorse to become the kingpin of that niche. And that's made even more possible considering they're not up against the likes of Tesla. Because let's be honest, who wants to go up against a giant like Tesla? And really even just Elon Musk for that matter. Now the beauty of being within that niche is they have the ability to target some very big fish. They're targeting huge delivery companies like DHL, FedEx, and UPS, as well as huge retail companies like Amazon and Walmart. And all of those companies require thousands or even hundreds of thousands of vehicles within their fleets. And considering those companies are so similar and have such similar requirements, Workhorse can and has designed particular products that work specifically for the big players within that market. And that's a really nice advantage to have. Now, just quickly before we move on, I have to say I'm not a financial advisor. This is all just my own research and my own opinions. And I just like to share that with you guys to give you a different perspective. All right, reason number two, and it is a Big one. Now I mentioned this in my video last week, my Neo stock analysis. Definitely check that one out. It's another EV company coming out of China. How easy has Tesla made it for these new EV companies to come in and start crushing it in their market? So if you think about it, Tesla were the company that had to convince the entire world that electric vehicles were better, more efficient, more environmentally friendly, and more cost-effective than gas and diesel vehicles. And probably most importantly, they had to convince the world that green vehicles were actually the way of the future. Basically just changing the landscape for vehicles forever. And if you think about it, it does not get any harder than that. They had to take a system that's been working for hundreds of years and flip it on its head. And we all know the famous saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But even despite that attitude, in comes Tesla as the main protagonist. They come in like a real life Bob the Builder. Can they fix it? Yes, they can. And now Workhorse can reap the benefits of that. They can focus all of their energy into perfecting their product as well as building relationships with their customers within their industry. Which brings us to number three, which is the unique products that Workhorse offer. Now, aside from the vans that they offer for these delivery services, they also offer Metron Telematics as well as, believe it or not, drones. Now the Metron Telematics is a cloud-based performance monitoring system which allows the customer to access real-time driving data from their vehicles, which gives their clients the data and info they need to optimize their delivery routes or routes, depending on where you're from. And when you're doing thousands and thousands of deliveries every single day from thousands and thousands of different delivery trucks and delivery drivers, that's when it becomes really important to save any way that you can. And if that system allows them to save time and time enough to fit more deliveries in, that is super valuable. And as for the drones, they are a very unique product and Workhorse have stated that they will cut delivery costs for small items under five pounds by about 95%. And if that turns out to be true and they find a practical way to utilize these drones, who knows, it could be something that really does set them apart. But as I mentioned in my Workhorse analysis video, which I'll link over here, I'm not 100% sold on the drones. I, I don't really know, it, it doesn't get me excited. Doesn't mean it's not a good product and it doesn't have a lot of potential. It just didn't get my juices flowing. All right, reason number four, their vehicles are actually real. They're not hypothetical like some of the EV companies that are out there at the moment. Workhorse already have 400 plus vehicles on the road collecting data and combined, they've accumulated more than 5 million real life driving miles on their clocks. And they've stated that these vehicles have been driving in the real world around real streets in real conditions, which means the data collected is accurate to what they can expect from their vehicles. Now, the reason this is so important is because a lot of these these EV companies, especially the up and comers, don't have vehicles on the road. They just have prototypes. And in some cases like Nikola, they haven't even made it to that stage yet. So having actual proven vehicles out on the roads 
In my opinion, that bodes really, really well for them. And for Workhorse, it actually goes a layer deeper. Not only do they have real vehicles out on the roads, they actually have the opportunity to work really closely with some big postal companies like UPS as well as USPS to collect data and even fine tune their vehicles. So after working closely with UPS, they were able to make them more than 4,000 pounds lighter. Their maintenance costs dropped by 10%. They lowered their floors to be able to fit more packages inside. They increased their driving range from less than 100 miles to more than 100 miles as as well as increasing their charge times. And these improvements have actually led to repeat orders from UPS, which eventually led them to placing a landmark order of a thousand vehicles. And by the way, if anyone's wondering if a hundred plus miles is good enough for these vehicles, I'm of the opinion that they only need to get one day's charge out of it because as long as they can do their job for the day and then charge overnight, they should be fine. It's kind of like your mobile phone. You don't need it to last three days. You only need it to last the day comfortably and then charge it overnight. So if the vehicles do that, I think that's fine. And if they weren't doing that, I can't imagine UPS, USPS, DHL, all these big companies, I can't imagine that they'd be interested. So to me, that means that they are getting enough mileage out of their charges. And speaking of USPS, in 2016, Workhorse won a prototype contract with USPS to build them six prototype vehicles tailored specifically to their needs. They then spent two years in the field collecting data and information to determine how they could improve their vehicles for that niche. And this relationship and trust building between USPS and Workhorse actually come back around in a huge way. And it's something we'll look at in a minute and it's really important. But before we do that, reason number five, and that is that orders are being placed and vehicles are being sold. Now, as I mentioned before, UPS have ordered 1,345 vehicles so far, and they are not the only ones to place orders. At the moment, they have about 1,100 pending orders from customers that include UPS, FedEx, Alpha Baking, WB Mason, and Ryder, as well as five dozen vehicles with DHL, which shows that there's genuine interest starting to be created within the industry from these big companies, which is only good news for Workhorse, especially if they land the mother load of deals. Which brings us to point number six. In 2019, USPS, United States Postal Service, issued an RFP which allowed a variety of companies to apply to help them with a new fleet of roughly 165,000 vehicles. Workhorse are now one of four companies vying for the contract with USPS, and it's a deal worth 6.3 billion dollars to whoever wins it. And considering Workhorse and USPS have already worked together in the past, like we discussed earlier, making a prototype and being used on the roads, that can only be a good thing because they already have that history and they already know their products work. And if you're speaking to the Workhorse bulls out there or looking up that contract online, it really does seem like Workhorse is the front runner. And if that happens to be the case, that could be the launching pad that they need. Which leads us to our reasons to be cautious about Workhorse. And the first of them is that a lot of their success, especially in the short term, is all dependent on that big buffer, Mac Daddy offer, that huge contract with USPS. Because without that deal, I just don't know if they have enough going for them at the moment. I really do feel like so much of their success does fall on that one big deal. And don't forget that landing that deal doesn't just mean that they supply 165,000 vehicles. They also have the ability to provide maintenance on those vehicles in the future, replace parts, all sorts of different things that come out of it. It creates an entirely new revenue stream, not to mention how it might help them drive new sales into their company once other companies start to feel jealous or want to get involved and can see the success that USPS are having. And by the way, I'm not suggesting that it's this deal or bust for Workhorse. Who knows? They might not get the deal and still be totally fine. I just think it hurts their chances. And if you have a look at point number two, which is to look over their financials, I'm not sure they're sitting in such a good position at the moment, especially considering they're not such a new company. They have been around for longer than you think. They started out in 2007 and went on the public exchange in 2016. So they're not a new company. And by this time, you would expect them to be doing a bit better than they are. But if we have a look at their income statement, you can see that they haven't been able to get the ball rolling. They haven't been able to get the wheels turning so far. Man, I love to chuck a random and pun at you guys. So as you can see here that while their gross profit losses decreased from 2017 to 2019, it's still in the red and their net income has gotten considerably worse since 2016 and is also severely in the red. And couple that with their current liabilities far outweighing their current assets, as well as their total liabilities and total assets, they're clearly not in a state of financial stability. And that brings us right back to our first reason to be cautious. And that is that it seems like without this USPS deal, they're kind of walking on a 
tightrope. It just feels like so much is riding on this one big deal. And like I said earlier, it might not be the case. Just because they don't get that deal doesn't mean it's a deal breaker, but it also could be. It's It remains to be seen. And that's one of the risks of these new companies. They haven't done a lot yet. They haven't had a lot of success. They haven't proven themselves within the market as a successful company. All in all, I just want you to understand that there is a lot of risk in investing in a company like Workhorse. Sure, their potential is through the roof. If they reach that potential, the sky is the limit. But just be aware that because they haven't proven themselves, because they haven't been there, done that, like Tesla and many other companies, we just don't know where they're headed. It's all hypothetical and it is all speculation. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. It means the world to me. Help me defeat that YouTube algorithm beast. And until next time, I'm Dan, and you've been Dan Splained. Y'all come back now, you hear. See ya!